Hi there, welcome to another edition of the Torino Diaries. Yeah, today's show is an attacking special. It's called the Dark Lads of Attacking Football. All this started because of a Twitter conversation between me, Cleon and Arty Herringbone. It was about attacking football. And the next thing you know, all three of us started looking at attacking tactics. And I was away on a f- trip and I decided, mm, let me put together a piece for the blog as well. So I did. I wrote something up very quickly. It's called The Mentality, Shape and the Theory of Relativity. You can find it on my blog if you want to get more information. You can also follow an SI forum straight, which Cleon started to call The Art of Attacking Football. You will find a lot of information that is discussed on this show. It's also discussed on those threads. What I plan to do on today's show is to explain how I play attacking football. Last season, I gave away a lot of points from draws. I, you know, matches I should have won, I threw away. This season, I was hell-bent on winning as many as I could. And, yep, we went on a massive run. And today's show is going to explain how I put together mentality, shape, and what I call the interrelationship of various other factors like roles, your tactical shape, whether it's top heavy, bottom heavy, and attributes. Stuff like this, put it all together. It sounds complicated, but then you know what's even funnier? It's actually very easy. Some of these matches, I used two shouts. In other matches, I, you know, I just, I was a goal down, I walked away, made a coffee, came back, oh, we leveled the match, sat down in my chair, oh, with two one half, that's sweet. So it was like that, you know, I didn't do much. I just let the players do their thing. Problem on the forums and I've noticed lately is people are overcomplicating things too much, you know. They have like seven shouts. They don't make no sense to me. It's like you stick all these shouts up and I'm asking myself, have people forgotten the basics? The basics is about the interrelationship between everything in the game. And if you don't understand that, then you may as well, you know, even if you stick in all the shouts, it's not going to help. So here on this show, I'm going to break things down into really simple terms. I'm going to show highlights from these games where I can to show what I mean. Before I begin, let me take you on a journey on how this engine developed. It has a bearing on why some of the older players seem to find the game easier and some people may find it difficult. It's all got to do with how we started the engine. The engine has got 8 million lines of code inside it. And um, over the years it has developed, it started out, you know, simple screen like this. And over the years, it developed until we had something called the with and without ball screens. Now, this was quite something back in the day. In the tactical creator, we would set up a system where we would know what the team would look like when they had the ball and what they looked like when they didn't have the ball. In fact, we could even determine what they should look like when they don't have the ball. Some of us on the forums thought this was a bit much because it would have made the game too simple. And people might exploit the game. Well, Wimbo screens, as I used to call them, they didn't last very long. What was left behind and what we started using a lot more was the arrows. And there were arrows all over the place. You know, your tactics with arrows like you're going up, going down, diagonally. In fact, by the time CM0304 came around the corner, we had the birth of super tactics. Two notable huge tactics of the day were Diablo and my own creation, Scramjet, which... I mean, this scramjet was just amazingly destructive. It just hammered teams 8-0, 9-0. You could, you know, start a game, um, set the tactic up and come back the next, you know, come back when the season was over and you'd be crowned champions. That was how ridiculously easy it was to manipulate the engine. The thing is that now, as I have learned, so they created a tactical creator. But what a lot of us still were able to leverage off was our knowledge of what a team should look like with and without the ball. And that is the basis of everything in the game. You need to know what your team is going to look like when they have the ball and what they're going to look like when they don't have the ball. If you don't have a clue, then you will probably have a few issues. So whenever you set up any of your tactics, ask yourself a question. What do we look like with the ball? What do we do? What are we going to look like during a transition? What are we going to look like when we are without the ball? And we're defending. So what shape are we going to take? These are the things that you have to ask yourself. And these are very important factors to consider when you're setting up a tactic. Mentality is really simple. It's a range that affects how risk tolerant your side is. And this will affect a host of other things. If you've got an attacking mentality, this guy is going to try different things. He's going to 
try more forward passes. He's going to try more. He might even try more direct passes. He might try to speed up the way he makes his passes. He will also look out for players who are have good off the ball running and they will start playing the ball forward a lot more. The likelihood of a forward pass is higher than the likelihood of a sideways pass. So mentality is just this guy is willing to take risks, moving the ball forward and trying to carve an opening. If the guy has got a hundred choices he can make, if he's got a high mentality, he's gonna consider 90 of them. Chances are, you know, some of them might be bad choices, but he's gonna try. If he thinks this is the best option, he's gonna go for it. If you have a mentality that's defensive, then out of the 100 options, he's going to cycle down and go to, maybe I'm going to only play these 20 choices that I have in terms of passes. Why? Because these are risk-free choices. So if the pass is backwards, that's where he goes. So mentality is just that. It's simple. So now you take mentality, you put it on the shelf. Okay, mentality, I want to play an attacking mentality. That's it. Okay, I've got my attacking and I put it on the shelf. This is the mentality I'm going to use on my side. Fine. Now you've got a mentality set up. Then you come to shape. Shape initially in the tactical creator made sense because the first version of shape was called philosophy and that was that made sense, you know. We actually had a way of setting it up. But over the years, the changes were made and shape slowly began to lose a lot of its uh, luster. In fact, it had no luster by the time FM15 was around. So in this edition of FM, there was a lot of noise being made in the backgrounds. So they decided to give shape a bit more of a bite. Now shape affects the depth of your team so essentially the distance between the forward the furthest guy and your back line in a very structured system will be slightly more it's it's imperceptible sometimes when you look in the screen you can't really tell but in terms of their transitions is very apparent so if you're looking at structure and you kick off and you go like okay i'm just looking at the screen damn it you know it doesn't look like anything it looks the same yeah it will probably look the same you're not looking at the shape during the period of time when there's no transition happening you have to look at it during the defensive transition and during the attacking transition because this is where shape kicks in if you have a shape that is structured players are divided into distinct groups that are responsible for distinct phases in play so the highly structured ones literally you know you're telling the players you guys are the defenders you guys are the attackers and you guys are the support guys okay so you defenders and attackers concentrate on your job and forget about everything else okay and then you have the other extreme you have fluid i mean i'm looking at fluid uh, instead of very fluid so let's fluid and very fluid almost you know there's um there's a percent there is a difference between the two but i rather use fluid because it's uh, easier for me to explain this players who are more attacking minded are more involved in the transitions Players who are more defensive minded are more involved in their transition. So they and then they have this added bonus here they included, which is they play with a bit more creative freedom. Now, what does creative freedom have to do with everything? Creative freedom allows them to break the rules. This is where you have to look at certain attributes in the game like teamwork, vision, off the ball, all these play a part in you know how a player is going to react put it in really simple terms think of it this way i've given my team more creative freedom the guys who've got higher teamwork are more likely to help out another player when he needs help so you're going to see certain things happen in a fluid setup in a fluid setup because they're more compact you might see again pressing you might see players doing two on two you might see a striker coming back to defend you might see winger doubling up or tackling or sliding into a challenge within his own 25-yard uh, area. This happens with a fluid setup. In a structured setup, in an attacking mentality, it's different. Here, you're telling players, you've got no creative freedom, or rather you have little creative freedom. I want you to concentrate on your roles. And there's a time and a place for you to use it. So it's so brilliant, you know. If I, if I wanted to set up a system which is attacking, because... Fluid shapes tend to be a bit more compact and structured shapes seem to be a bit more, you know, spread out, laterally that is. You're going to have certain systems that seem to play better with fluidity and certain systems that play better with st structural rigidity. I'll give you, an, give you an example. If you have a top heavy system like a 4 2 3 one or a 4 2 4 any system which has got like four or five fillers in the opponent's half. If you're playing with a structured system, those players are out there on their own. You're like, hey, bye, see you later, go and do your work. 
Now, they have high creative freedom. Do they need high creative freedom? Yeah, they do. Because those four fellas are, you know, they are going to have to carve out opportunities on their own. If you're playing a top-heavy system with a structured shape, what you're going to see is isolation. Chances are you're going to ask these four fellas who are in the opponent's half to go carve out opportunities. Why? Because during the transition phase, they've got fewer players to support them. Creative free, The lack of creative freedom inhibits other people from leaving their roles to assist them. And because of the structural lateral gaps that they have between players, these players who are attacking, they have to be man for man better than the team they are attacking. So you need to consider all this when you're using when you're choosing a shape. So if I were using a 4-2-3-1, which is the system I'm using right now, um, if I play the 4-2-3-1, there is going to be a time when I go structured and there's going to be a time when I go fluid. There is, it's, there's no such thing as I'm going to use fluid all the way. Or I'm going to use structure all the way. No. In this match, we used the 4-2-3-1 and my plan was to go attacking fluid the whole match. Unfortunately for me, my plan had to change halfway through the game. We started the game uh, with Danilo Evola scoring a great goal. And then they managed to equalize off uh, Leonardo Pavlotti uh, less than five minutes later. Marlon managed to get a goal from a corner to give us a 2-1 lead. And then Monsieur Danilo Evola, who had picked up a yellow card on the 27th minute, went on to pick up another yellow card in the 51st minute. This uh, brought us to 10 men. And I decided at that moment, okay, let me try. I mean, I want to try and see whether I can go defensive structured. And that didn't really work very well because uh, Jordi Reina scored 10 minutes later, making it 2 all. At this point, I got completely mad. I, I, I lost my temper with myself. And I went like, okay, I've decided to play attacking fluid this whole season. What the hell am I doing? So I went back in and I decided, okay, if I'm going to play attacking... I'm going to have to change my plans. The 4 2 3 one is a top-heavy system, so that's what I depended on. Since you got all these guys up in attack, and I've lost the man, what I did was I turned all three of these guys into attack. And I took Bruno Perez, turned him to support. He was already on attack, so I've moved him to support, and I brought on Silva for Belotti. Belotti was taken off, so literally I only have these three guys trying to create something, with Alan, you know, trying to lend support, because he's in this half of the pitch. And... It worked brilliantly because now we are unstructured. So these players are going to carve up opportunities. If they are man for man better than the other team and your roles are done just nice, then you will see something happen. I mean, in this case, I was happy to see something happen. Uh, we managed to get the third goal from Kamerglick in the 64th minute. And then our fourth goal was just typifies what a structured goal can look like. Bruno Perez will play the ball up for Aleandro, then drop back to support. Alan is coming in late and Parigini is there for the cross to hit in the goal. I was so happy. 4-2, we beat Sampdoria away from home. In your system, you need to identify the roles that you have. If you're going to be playing an attacking system, make sure that you're attacking, you know who your attacking groups are going to be. These need to be the guys who you know, you're going to depend on to create openings for you. You are playing a, a neutral system like a 4-4-2 or 4-1-4-1. Then fluid helps because it brings more people into the attacking fray when you want to go attacking. It also helps when you are structured because your players are more disciplined. They are more likely to stay in their positions and deny another team opportunities because during transition phases is when your team loses shape. So if you're using a structured system, you're less likely to lose shape during a transition. However, if you're using a fluid system, there's a stronger possibility you'll lose your shape. Because your players are, you know, your fullback could have gone somewhere into the middle of the pitch to act like a third central midfielder in a fluid system. And then suddenly you lose the ball, and then you've got no fullback on the left flank, and this guy is going to run all the way back, so you've got a gap on the right flank emerging because your fullback decided he wanted to play like a superstar in the middle of the park. That can happen on fluid. So you need to know the attributes of your players and you need to understand the attributes of your players. So basically, this is the whole thing about the theory of relativity. Everything is interrelated. Okay, some context. Uh, it's September in the league and we've already won the first four league games of the season and we are up against PSG in the um, Champions League and 
I already noticed that they were pretty solid, so I decided um, to try playing fluid in this game using a 4411 system. I think I, I have this system from last season, in fact. So here I have my 4411 setup attacking and fluid. So we start off the game fluid and I'm looking immediately at transitions. I want to see how quickly my team goes from defense to attack. Instinct immediately tells me they are fluid. This passage of play basically told me this is going to be a compact side because so many people, so many players were involved in transitions. They go from counter attack back into defense. And just before they go from midfield to attacking transition, four players move into attack roles. And when they are firmly in attack phase, the support players come in. These are the clues that I look for to tell me what I'm up against. I'm also looking at our own shape to make sure that we deny them the space at the back. A fluid system, you will see players having space. They can find each other to pass the ball around and they'll all be close together. And you'll be finding that your attack movements are compact and players are going to come up in support. The downside is you're going to be using a fair bit of creative freedom from your players. Basically, I set up the 4141 and the 4411 for matches against European competition because I reckon we are not as good as they are. They are much faster and stronger. When we managed to score against PSG, I went like, oh, 55th minute. I was playing off my laptop for the first time this season, uh, so it didn't help my sk the skins didn't help me very much. So in here we are again, fluid transitioning. Uh, you can see that if you don't get your transitions right and you don't have the right players, you can suffer. And this is exactly what happened to us. We were made to pay because our players are not good enough at getting the ball out and during a transition phase. You absolutely need to make sure that if you want to play a fluid system and because you're going to be high up the pitch, there's only one solution to this. Make sure you have the right place and the right places to make those kind of passes behind, behind their lines or across their lines. It was the first time it used the system. It's a basic 4411. It's not my preferred system in the Serie but I needed to find some kind of a system that could work against European competition. For the match against Lazio, I decided to return to my favorite 4231 system in Serie A. It's a straightforward flip flop, you know, one side of the pitch, the fullbacks on attack, the other one is fullbacks on support, and then I flip the inside forwards, one is on attack and one's on support, so it's not too complicated the system. In terms of our instructions, we have shorter passing play or defense, open point to box, prevent short goalkeeper distribution, play much narrower. Thing is, I'm very fluid. So I was thinking if I'm going to be, you know, very compact that way, why don't I just go compact narrow as well? So that way I can always have people to pass to. Lazio have lined up with a 4 1 2 2 1. So once again, I'm focusing on transitions. So those, that's a very quick look at my shots. Well, at the start of the game, it's really hard to tell what shape they have. You have to wait for a transition. I'm interested to see who are my players involved in transitions. Once I start get, watching that, I'll start being able to spot the AI. The single most important thing about any setup is support roles. You know, if you're going to have attack players, you're yeah, cool. But you need the support players to mop up. An attacking system, you ideally want to be able to camp in an opponent's house so they can cover as many goal-scoring opportunities as you want or can afford to find. The moment Gaston Silva got a yellow card, I decided to do something different. Um, give him an attacking role, let him not worry about defending so much and get Nino to drop back a bit with a support uh, role. And then things got interesting because I had forgotten by putting Silva on an attacking role in a fluid system and attacking mentality, he's going to have a lot of running to do to cover up, you know, space. So here he goes running off after Basta and then decides to do something really challenging. He gets another yellow card. And with the yellow card, we drop down to, we lose a man on the 23rd minute against Lazio. At this point in time, I'm like, holy Okay, this is going to be a super challenge. So I've lost a player in a very critical spot on the pitch. So what do I do? I take off Pelotti, bring on Danilo Avila, look at the two internal inside forwards and tell them both to go on attack and put both my fullbacks on support. It's time for me to hunker down and last out. We managed to ride out the storm in the first half and even though we have less possession, I'm still very happy with my shots on target conversion rate. I could have chosen two things. I could have decided to 
go to structure and then let my attackers do the thing that they're going to do on that system. Or I could just hunker down and play on fluid, get more support and then we, we're still able to defend. And even though we were man down, I was never in doubt of the result for the game. We won this match comfortably 2-0 with a 60% conversion rate a man down. The 4-2-3-1, you just saw it fluid one moment and the next moment I'm using a structured system for another match. What this goes to show is that under the right circumstances, you can use any shape you want. But you have to understand why you're using that shape and under what circumstances. You need to look at your tactic as well. Is it top heavy or bottom heavy? If it's a top heavy system, you want to give them more creative freedom. If they're not unlocking a defense, it increases their creativity. More players come up to support a top heavy system so they're not so isolated. At the end of the day, how you want to play, if you're unsure, always take flexible. There's a lower penalty for that. If you go to fluid, make sure you know your attributes, make sure you know your roles. The same applies to structured. If you're going to go structured here, yeah, you know, last season Torino were a weaker team. I went structured because I wanted to grind out results. This season, I want flash, so I've gone fluid. You know, I want more creativity. I want to unlock more sites. I want to, you know, I want to not win by one goal. So basically, that's it. You know, it's that simple. The art of attacking football isn't rocket science. It's all about knowing your shape, knowing whether it's top heavy, bottom heavy, understanding your roles, understanding your attributes. There are going to be certain attributes that suit the fluid system more than they would the structured system. Structure is all about discipline. Fluid is all about creativity. Both can work under different circumstances. You can play the 4231 as a structure system, or you can play the 4231 as a fluid system. If you're not sure, always go flexible. Well, I hope you enjoyed this edition of the Torino Diaries. It's a bit different. The show, yeah, you know, we decided to go with an attacking special. And I'm already 15 games into my third season. And I thought I'd share what I know about attacking systems with all of you. It took a while to get the show done right, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please, please drop me a note on Twitter. I'll try and get back to you. SI forums, you can find me there as well. Or, you know, find me on my blog at addicted2fm.com. I, well, I've got to go. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye-bye.